today we're going to be looking at email marketing for impact and I don't want to come across as the guru of email marketing for nonprofits. I'm just going to throw out some ideas and you are more than welcome to throw questions in the chat, even say some ideas or you might have learnings or something that you've read, some research that might even contradict what I'm saying. So feel free to, to do that so we can all learn from each other. It's a big topic and we could really dive into lots of different areas on this, but I'm only going to cover a few little things today and they include, let's see if I can go to the next slide. So keys to impact for email marketing today, we're going to look at the segmentation and personalization, alignment, testing, attention, and then just a few little hacks to help you with your email marketing. And then at the end, if we get some time, we might just see if you've got maybe some problems, some issues that you're having with your email marketing and see if uh, we can solve them today. And yeah, hopefully we get to solve some problems for you or at least try and get the conversation started. So that's what we're going to cover today. Hopefully we'll get through it all. But the first one, this is a huge topic and I'm only just brushing over it this morning, but I believe that for email marketing to be really impactful and powerful in your nonprofit, you need to look at your segmentation um, and your personalization. Often when we are getting some emails out the door, we just want to send it out. We don't think about who the audience is. We just send it to every single audience that we can. We don't think about how we might try and talk individually to each segment. We just get it out the door, get it done. But the more that you can uh, segment your emails, alter, tweak the content for each of your segments, that's where it gets to be really powerful and also might help you mitigate against more unsubscribes. Personalization is one that I really like to do. And the first one always is insert that that first name in your email. And next after here has a little example. So even just by putting at the start of their email, hi, Jeff, it's increased their clicks by 270%. Other things that you might want to do to increase that personalization in your email, if you're sending out a donation ask email, just throwing in there the lifetime value. So you might put in there, hi, Jeff, Thank you so much for your past support. That past support has meant that you've contributed $570 over the lifetime of being, you know, a supporter of ours. So putting that previous support in, you know, other details of the person that might be of value and that might be, we know that you're passionate about this particular program or a particular way of supporting us. And it's really important that you get those things right and really check your data, even just something that I find in different places that I've worked or clients that I've had, I notice just even the data is not um, correct or names aren't capitalized. And just it's important to do your data hygiene to make sure that that when that data goes into your email marketing, that it's it's correct. And we've probably all gotten an email uh, from somebody that says, hi, first name. So from the get-go, you're already like, oh, what are these guys on about? Any other examples of where personalization works has worked really well? Feel free to pop something in the chat. I'll give you a few seconds. It might be uh, something that's really popular, especially in that peer-to-peer -peer space, is creating a dashboard of, of a person's stats. So if it's how many kilometers they've moved, or how much they've raised. Doing tricky things like that can really uh, increase someone's engagement. So I'll keep going. Alignment, something that I see work really well is that we make sure that we don't just treat our email marketing as the only channel that's going to increase that response, but it, it works in alignment with your other channels. Mariana just mentioned about Another way that you can use um, 
personalization is is pearls and that's definitely a great one as well so pearls is a personalized url so just with yeah just with your email marketing it's important not to consider it as the only channel but see how you can align it with your other channels and actually make sure that you schedule things in a way that you align things really well so it might be that when you're sending out an email for your appeal that's coming out that you actually just send an email saying hey look out for the letter that we're going to send you in the mail so it's warming them up to look out for that letter it might be on social media so you might actually direct people in your email to social media and go hey we'd love you to like this post on social media or vote on a social media post or add a comment but also the same day that you're sending an email make sure you post the same content on social media so they work in tandem so they might have opened the email that morning asking for a donation or asking them to sign up and they might not have actually done something that day but if they see later on at night on social media the same content the same image that you use in your email it's going to trigger going to trigger them to respond also, and I've done this, this is something I'm going to be doing in an upcoming campaign for a client. I've noticed that their open rates haven't really been that strong. So even just including SMS and going, hey, uh, I've sent you an email this morning, open it, maybe even including the sender name in that SMS so that they, when they get that email, they'll, they'll recognize that person and go, oh yeah, that's something that I should open. Even if you're doing a phone call, it might be a welcome call for a fundraising event or an appeal phone call, just telling them, hey, we're going to send you an email. I'm going to be sending you an email personally. Keep an eye out for that. That's all going to help the success of your emails. Next slide. The next one is all about getting their attention. And I say this often, but you've got till the count of seven to grab someone's attention especially online research says that a person's average attention span before they bounce online is eight seconds and they only read about a third of the word the words on an average page so you've really got seven seconds probably even less to capture their attention and you might do that by making sure you put that real compelling part of your story up front putting that as a quote in your email making sure that you've got that um, that viewer curious that they're wanting to continue, and and also your subject line. If your subject line doesn't get their attention, then they're not going to read what's in your email. So a few things here uh, around getting attention. Like I said, the subject line. Don't give away too much. Don't tell them everything about what's in your email because they might decide that they don't want to eat. Open it. And next after say that this is a mystery, make sure that your subject line has some mystery and next after has some really great content around building your, your subject lines and testing those. When it comes to the content in your email, I'm really against using what a friend of mine likes to call Wimbledon text. So it's just big blocks of text that make you do this. It doesn't get your interest. It's just paragraphs and paragraphs of the same copy that nothing's bolded nothing's underlined it's just words on a page it's just vomit on a page that doesn't excite anyone and to make sure you vary your content so it isn't just a big block of text but you might just throw a, a short sentence in there and just just separate that out it varies the look of your email as well like i said pull out some headings make some things things bold pull out some quotes that you might turn into a little image you know a little graphic even some of that content you might want to just convert into some bullet points i love bullet points i don't like to read big chunks of copy my eyes go to headings quotes bullet points those are the things that make me decide if i want to read your big blocks of text that you put in um, your email and just a few ways that people are doing to get attention in their emails. Animated GIFs are becoming really popular. And a bit of caution that we don't 
we've got to make sure that we don't overdo that and just have everything flashing like we used to do in the 90s when websites first came out. But it just helps to attract your attention through an email that might be otherwise fairly boring or, or fairly plain. So here we've got an example just of something we want to highlight, um, you know, that your gift is going to be doubled. So that's just highlighted with flashing, flashing little GIF. One I saw from um, SU, Scripture Union, it was a really plain email from the CEO. But what they did is actually just converted the little YouTube clip to a little looping GIF, which was um, really different and makes you want to click that, which I think was, was quite different and quite good. And two, I want to preface this as well that... Um, if you make it too markety, if you've got too many flashy things, so many graphics, people will just feel like they're being marketed to. And so it's, it's good to think about how it, that you don't always want it to be super flash. Often, especially with donor appeals, a an email that is fairly plain, that uh, plain text from your CEO will outperform something that's too flashy and markety like that. So it, I would recommend bearing that content. I think I've got some more examples here. So like I mentioned, a dashboard style graphic is, or, or email, sorry, is, can be really interesting and attention getting. And this is from a charity I worked at a number of years ago. And back in the day, I used the subject line, there's new activity on your dashboard. Um, and still to this day, they're using that subject line in their emails, which I feel Quite chuffed about but it's enticing it's oh there's it's like a notification on your iphone oh what is this notification i want to see what it's about and that still is is performing well and in that charity too got a, an email from them recently and they put a big graphic around the bike ride to show you to entice you oh remember how amazing that event is it's quite a big graphic gif as well it was about 18 megabytes which is really interesting Another one here, just outlining the different ways you can support or programs that you could help donate to. And they just step those out in a little graphic. And here's another little example of a dashboard that I've created with a fun little uh, gift to begin with. So you can really have lots of fun with that, tap into that gamification and things like that. Uh, next one is testing. And for your email to be impactful it's really it's really powerful when you start to test different things and here we see another example from my good friends that i'm using a lot today from next after even just testing the call to action so here you have a clear call to action please make your year end gift today so really clear what you want them to do versus something that's really vague what does it actually mean you want us to stand with you do you want me to physically stand up? Is that what you want me to do? Or you want me to actually, oh, you want me to make a gift. So they actually saw that just from this little test that they got half donations, half the donations from being really vague and they're called action. So some things that you can test in your emails and you might have your own, feel free to throw them in the chat. So like I said, a plain text email versus a really overly designed one, call to actions, subject lines doing a really short email just really simple only a few paragraphs one call to action versus a long email um, might have a really long story in there it might be more of a newsletter style you might give them multiple things that you want them to do and again things that are quite common with testing your emails set the send time the send day and maybe you have in your head, you've just always made sure, oh, don't send an email on Monday. Don't send an email on Friday. That's been drilled on into me um, forever, but it's worth testing that theory. And also it might be that you might send an email on a Thursday, but you might actually find that most people open that email on the weekend. They might clear out their inbox. So just testing those theories or those things that you've thought the gold standard you've always got to send on this day. Putting GIFs in, putting no GIFs in, putting a whole lot of images in, no images. 
And another test that I've seen is with the header image of your email, you could just have it plain. You could put a heading in there, but no call to action. Put and, and you might compare that to actually making it look like there's a button on that header image and seeing if you get more um, click-throughs on that. And two, you could do all of these tests or you could think, oh, I'm going to test all of these things, but you might not actually have even enough of a audience to do a worthwhile test. You want to send it to maybe about a thousand people at least to see a, a, a decent, a significant, do a significant test. So a way to shortcut the process is find out research on what works well and Next After is a great place to do that, and they have tests on all sorts of things. So I'd recommend um, checking them out. And then also an important one to test, especially if you're seeing poor open rate, is to actually test your deliverability of that email. Um, and you can do that even before sending out the email. One that I've recently used is called Glock. So with Glock, you can actually, what you do when you sign up with them is they will give you a list of 70 emails that are real email addresses. You put some, a little tag in your email and you send it to those 70 people. And then after a few minutes, you'll actually see the results of that email. You'll see how many end up in the inbox, how many that might end up in say the promotions tab of Gmail, how many are in spam, and then how many just don't even end up anywhere. And then it gives you a few little tips on how to fix up your email. It might show, oh, you've got a spam word in there, for example. Uh, and then you can do a little test again to see how how that's improved. If any other testing tools, feel free to throw them in the chat. But yeah, here you've got an example of an email that I recently sent. Seven emails were missing. Some ended up in spam. So I made a few little tweaks that it recommended and it increased the, the sort of the deliverability by a few percent, which made me feel better and I could sleep that night. So that's a really good one to check out. Uh, and like I said, it's worth looking into, is this a worthwhile test? And HubSpot has a little a little article here on working out if that's a, a good test size and SurveyMonkey do as well has a little um, testing significance calculator there for you. What I've done for you today as well is I've made a little spreadsheet for you which you can download and edit and have a play with but it's got a number of different things you can test and then plug in a few of your results as well. Mariana's just posted in the comments as well um, a little tool called email subject line grader.com. So check that one out. Thanks for that. Yeah, so I've got a little spreadsheet here that you can use and you can track how your different emails are going. Um, also prompts you to think, oh, do I want this email to be plain text or designed? Do I want to just put plain links in or do I want to do buttons or do something special there? Do I want it to be a long or a short email? Do I want to put static images in or GIFs? So you can have a play around with that. Now we're getting to the fun part. Just some hacks. And this is something that I've done recently is started to build a little swipe file. And a swipe file is something common commonly used with copywriters and it's a place where you can store all sorts of inspiration so if you work in direct mail or non-profits you might have a shoebox full of direct mail that you've gathered over the years so this is like an email version of that so just collecting useful emails that you've had over um, the years and a few ways you can do this one way that i've done that is just by creating a Google spreadsheet. So in that, see if I can open. And again, I've made a little freebie for you today. Stop sharing that. And just bear with me. So I've made a little spreadsheet for you here where you can start to do that. 
So you can put the name of the campaign, the name of the email, the description, put the subject line in, and then put what the purpose was. Was it a a donor appeal? Was it a an acquisition appeal to try and get people to join an event? Was it an email that you got as part of the event? Then you can start uploading those. So you might print those emails as a PDF and upload them to your Google Drive. You can also just get the preview link of that email and, and chuck it in there. And where this becomes really powerful and useful is you might be in a rush to create an email and you're like, oh, I need to find a good subject line. You can just go to this swipe file and find a, a subject line that might be really handy or it might just prompt prompt you to come up with one of your own. So that's a really great way to do that. So you can do it in a Google spreadsheet, uh, which I've provided you. I'll, I'll send out a link today. Let's get back to my presentation here. Okay. So yeah, so you can do that by a Google spreadsheet. Another way which I've heard, and I've got some, I've got a link here about how to, to do that is, is through Gmail. So if you just create a separate, uh, email account and sign up for all the charities, all the events, all the fundraising campaigns, even political campaigns are really useful. And you'll just start to fill your inbox with all sorts of inspiration. And what's really useful in Gmail particularly is you can add tags, put things in folders. So if you're looking for, okay, I just want a welcome email. If you've tagged all of your welcome emails in Gmail, you can easily just find all of the emails that are in that category and get some inspiration. It's not stealing, just want to say that. It's it's gleaning, it's getting inspiration. And even in those emails, you might find some inspiration around, oh, that's a really good way to introduce the email, or that's a really good paragraph. I'm just going to use that as some inspiration. So I've got the Google spreadsheet there for you to have a play with. Here's the link on how to make that swipe file in, in a Gmail account. And here's just a website that actually is just a tool where people just upload all sorts of inspiration on like emails, websites, ads. So you can just go there every now and then and get a little bit of inspiration. Next hack, let's see. If you're like me, you've probably built, you've maybe built thousands and thousands of emails over the years. And maybe you've got a campaign that you have to build 30 emails in the next few weeks or something ridiculous. Um, and we all know the bane of your existence for building so many emails is reviewing of emails and you've got to re send them maybe to five different people in your organization if you're big. Um, and then you've got people emailing you back going, sending their feedback in so many different ways which can be really annoying and you don't know what they mean. I've found a tool that's really, really helpful for streamlining that process. It's called Markup. It's actually free to use, which is incredible. I don't think they even have a paid version. And all you need to do is you can either upload, um, say, a PDF of the email, or you can actually just grab the preview link, upload it to Markup. And then people can actually just go in and tag a certain section of the email. I'll just stop sharing this for a moment and pull up markup for you so you can see it. But this is an absolute lifesaver. Screen. Oh, I've got something fun happening there. So log into markup. All you need to do is upload your preview link here. Hit go and it'll upload the email. And what's really good is that it just keeps a record of all the emails that you're reviewing and you can open the email and it'll load very soon. There it is. And anywhere on the email, you can just click on it, type in your comment. You can even upload vid images and things like that, screenshots or whatever. And you can even just record a little a loom as well as your response, which is really good. And two, once as the editor of that email, you can resolve comments and 
the people that are in, included in the review process will actually see updates as you're changing and get updates about things that you've resolved. And what's cool too is that you'll actually see those changes happening live in this document. Because it's a preview link, you'll see things actually change in the document live, which is really handy. So that's a huge lifesaver that I've found recently. And they've also just added, just yesterday, they added a feature where you can do the same thing with video. So you can upload a video to markup and you can pin certain parts of the video and say where to change it. So that's my hack. Let's see, have I got any more? Oh, that's it for the hacks for today. But yeah, while we're here and we've actually got a little bit of time, are there any problems or are there any challenges with your email marketing at the moment? Have you got any questions? Maybe maybe there's things that we mentioned today that you'd love to do in your emails, but you don't know how to do that in your particular email platform. You don't know if it's possible. Maybe we can recommend a different email platform or something like that. But yeah, have you got any problems? Have you got any questions or challenges? I'll give you a a second or two if you want to either come off mute and have a chat or you want to manually type that into the chat box, but I'll just uh, give you a few seconds there to do that. I might just do a little recap while we do that. Go back to the beginning. And there's probably a whole lot of other keys that there are to email marketing that we could add to this, but these are just the basic ones today that we'll cover. So again, just look at your segmentation and your personalization. How can you make sure that you're talking, saying the right things that are relevant to your different audiences and not just throwing everything in one email and hoping for the best? Um, also looking at how you can personalize that email. Definitely as, as much as you can where possible, make sure you include the person's name in the intro of the email and even dot it throughout your email as well to make them uh, feel like you're talking to them. And mentioning their lifetime value, how much they've contributed over the years, if that's possible. Other details about the person. What are they, if you know what they're passionate about, can you include that uh, in the email? And again, make sure you get it right. Alignment, so see how you can align that with different your different channels making sure that um, you're mentioning the different channels. Hey, in your email, hey, we've sent you a letter. Hey, have you checked out our social media? And then also trying to send the email on the same day that you're posting a similar content, maybe to help improve your open rates. Hey, I've just sent you an email. Go check it out. Also phone, just mentioning how people can make sure they look out for the emails that they get when you give them a phone call. Just realize I'm sharing the wrong screen. There we go. Yeah, making sure that you're looking at keeping their attention and getting that attention within the first few seconds. Think about how you can do that. And then looking at how you might get their attention with GIFs, animated GIFs, maybe including emojis in your email. Maybe not so much if it's from the CEO. <laughs> building little dashboard emails, highlighting parts of your email just in a simple animated GIF. What's next? Testing. Look at how many different things that you can test in your emails. Plain versus design, calls to action, subject lines, short versus long, send time and send day. Are you going to include GIFs or no GIFs? Um, putting buttons in your headers or no buttons things like that. Yeah. And then just mentioning that testing app uh, called Glock apps, check that one out and also email subject line grader.com. Thanks Marianne for that one. And then, yeah, there's some significant count calculators there. I've given you a free little template for testing and yeah, then some more hacks there, making a swipe file and markup. Marianne's heading off to actually rev go review some of the tax EDMs today. So that's great. Thanks for joining us. But if there's no questions today, we might wrap it up there. 
but also just feel free to reach out to me if if you need some help with some email marketing i've built lots of emails um, i do that for clients on the side if you need help with building some animations some gifts happy to do that i do some consulting on the side if you do need that help if you want to outsource it but yeah if you're having some problems or you want to know how um, to do some of the things that we've shown you today feel free to reach out connect with me and in a few weeks we've speaking of tax time campaigns in a few weeks we've got our next facebook ads users group coming up so check that one out but thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you got something out of it. I uh, hope you got some ideas and uh, some tools. Um, but yeah, we'll leave it there for today and hope to see you at our next TechSoup Australia event.